So my name is Tim Lorden, and I'm the executive director of the Internet Education Foundation, which coordinates the State of the Net Conference. Welcome to the 20th annual State of the Net, which seems to me to be insane because I didn't think we'd get to the second annual. Uh, but that's a totally different story. Um, I think I'd like to make a profound statement today about what 20 years means, where we are and what point in time on internet policy we are in right now. Looking back over the last 20 years of internet policy, the ebb and flow, some things are totally new in our space. We're calling this conference the ne next epoch of internet policy because we feel like something fundamentally is happening with internet policy in the next 20 years are going to be even more exciting than the last 20 years. That said, a lot of the issues that we dealt with 20 years ago are still in play today. Um, last year, like 20 years ago, we were talking about the digital divide, front and center this year. Um, we're at an incredibly important inflection point in history when it comes to connecting every American to broadband internet. It was the same questions as we were having 20 years ago. Intellectual property, very important 20 years ago. We're seeing the emergence of that issue this year. And you see that, that reflected in the entire program that we have here today. Um, a lot of the other issues like um, cybersecurity, same as they are then, they are now. Privacy as well. Um, but it is a fundamentally different time and we're really excited to host this conference. I'm not gonna go into a lot of details about um, how I feel about the issues, because that's not my job. My job is to curate conversations about them. So the, the program will reflect um, all of the things that we're thinking about when it comes to this, this point in time in internet policy. Um, and I think in the coming months, we'd like to kind of host a conversation about the inflection point that we're in in this ne next epoch of internet policy. And we'll invite you to that as well. So we want to have a follow-up at this conference to focus more on kind of this point in time to kind of mark the 20 years. So be on look, look out for that. I have some housekeeping um, I want to do. The schedule is much bigger than it was last year. We've introduced lightning talks and we've introduced salons at the end of the day. Um, the schedule is at SOTN24.sked.com. It's posted all over the place. Um, there's an app called SCED that you can use to look at the schedule. It looks a little complicated, but uh, you'll figure it out. But we have a lot of, lot of programming. We're really excited about the Lightning Talks and all the people that volunteered. Uh, about 100 people sent in proposals for Lightning Talks and salons, and we could only accommodate something like 18 of them. So um, please, uh, I want to thank everybody that sent in uh, a lightning talk proposal and a song proposal. I'm sorry we couldn't accommodate all of them. We need a bigger space, but that's a different topic. Um, I want to. I need to thank uh, some of the, the sponsors and my board members. We passed out at the front desk um, a list of the board members um, that we have, and, and we're very grateful for them. You'll see them come up throughout the day introducing different people, and, and I want to thank them. Um, but one thing I have to thank is the sponsors, because without people willing to sponsor this conference and sponsor a conversation that has a lot of robust debate and not, not everybody agrees on the topics here. It's really incredible that people would come out to sponsor and curate, um, allow us to curate um, this, this debate. And, and they include Comcast, TikTok, Meta, NetChoice, Netflix, uh, Pepsi, Verizon, Workday, Amazon, AT&T, Discord, Lumen, um, Encompass, Internet Society, um, NCTA, Network On, Public Interest Registry, Stand Together, Venable, American University, and I want to spe send a special thank you to Glen Echo Group. Um, a lot of the graphics you see around the space and online are the result of Glen Echo Group's amazing um, public relations and media affairs uh, team. They're incredible. We could not have done this conference without them, so I want to thank Maura Cor Corbett, Amy Schatz, and her team for an amazing job. Um, that's pretty much it for um, the the housekeeping with the two, four people. Um, there's a donate button when you register for this conference. And last year, one person uh, d made a donation to us when we were a 501c3, and I was very grateful. This year, four people made a donation to us, and I'm, I'm like, that's a fourfold increase, and I'm really excited about that. Mike Nelson, Matt Wood, Shelly Sandoval, and Dan, Dan Luber are my personal heroes this year. Thank you so much. Um, and, and now, forgive me for prattling on, but um, let me introduce Alan Davidson, who's the Assistant Secretary of Commerce. Principal he's the Principal Advisor to the President on Telecom and Information Policy. Um, NTIA is one of my, my favorite uh, agencies in town. Um, I used to work there a long time ago, and the issues were not as huge as they are uh, facing NTIA today. 
Um, Alan, uh, Alan is like a renaissance man of internet policy. Uh, he's been everywhere, he's done everything. Uh, he's been at Mozilla, he's been New America, uh, Google, he's been at the Department of Commerce even before. Um, a lot of people don't know that uh, Alan holds an engineering degree from MIT as well as a law degree from Yale Law School. Um, and mo most importantly, when I met Alan, he was working for CDT, and uh, they are our father orga organization. They created this organization, uh, for which we are grateful. And Alan, at the time with this conference was conceived, was our board treasurer. So he's largely to blame for all of this. Um, so uh, he's going to be doing a fireside chat with, Sat, um, with Kat Sikruski from the, from the Washington Post. She's a national, uh, national policy reporter. Um, and she was the, the first anchor of the, te the, the Tech Policy 202 at the Washington Post. So um, Kat, Alan, please. <laughs> 